Hey guys, my name is Kelly Lynch and I am the owner of Turning Point Wellness, a private therapy practice located in Connecticut and I specialize in treating PTSD in EMS professionals. I wanted to come in here today and just talk to you really quick about what PTSD actually is, dispel some common misconceptions about it, give you a couple statistics super quick, and then talk to you about the basic signs and symptoms, just kind of things to look out for as either you're exploring whether or not this is an appropriate diagnosis for yourself, or if you're noticing that there's some things that are just different in friends or family members or a loved one or partner at work. So let's get into it. So PTSD is post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a, a term that falls under the umbrella of mental health and wellness or behavioral health. Many people look at PTSD as a mental illness, but I want to really reinforce to you that this is not actually a mental illness. This is an injury. PTSD develops as a result of directly being exposed to or experiencing either through yourself or witnessing somebody experiencing this, a traumatic event, either a threat to life or limb or a general wellness. So when somebody is exposed to or experiences a traumatic event, that causes instantly our brain to begin to think and process information in a very different way as you're in a heightened state than how you think or process information when you're in a lowered kind of resting state. When PTSD develops, it's because your brain almost gets stuck in that heightened state and forgets how to think normally. In the process of treating PTSD, what we're able to do is take your brain out of high gear and reteach it, kind of remind it, how to think and process in a typical way. So that's why we look at this as this is an injury, it's not an actual mental illness. That's important, especially as we're, we're here to really re work on reducing stigma around asking for help and seeking support. So again, post-traumatic stress disorder, it's just what we label it as is a disorder, but this is actually an injury. And as you look, if you're, if you're interested in stuff like this, if you look more into research around PTSD, you'll actually find that there's many organizations who research it and specialize in PTSD who are actually beginning to call this PTSI. So they're changing out the disorder part for injury instead. So some statistics around PTSD. Women are more pre, kind of predisposed to PTSD than men because just studies have shown that women are more prone to being at risk for violent or traumatic incidences because they're more prone to being targeted. Um, and then the other important statistic to, to really be aware of as far as PTSD goes is that over 50% of all cases of diagnosed PTSD end up resolving, like it goes away. Uh, and this goes right back to what I was saying earlier of this is an injury, not a disorder, because we've been able to validate and show over the course of treatment and then studying PTSD for decades now, that we can heal this to the point where it's no longer even present in somebody's life. So some things to look out for as far as PTSD goes, just some basic signs and symptoms. I, and again, either looking out for this in yourself, a loved one, family member, friend, spouse, partner at work, these are just things to kind of keep in the back of your mind and, and look for as you're going through the process of your daily lives. So one of the most common things with PTSD, first and foremost, is changes in mood. Some stuff like this could be where you're seeing somebody who previously was a really patient person, now all of a sudden either have a very short fuse or no fuse at all. Other types of mood changes could be somebody who's typically been extroverted prior to a traumatic event all of a sudden becoming very introverted or very kind of like like silent or some people will also describe it as almost like stone cold. Mood changes are one of the most common signs of there's something more going on. Um, another thing that to be aware of is avoidance symptoms. So everything about PTSD is about being heightened. And when somebody has PTSD, what they're going to do is want to do the exact opposite of being heightened, which means that they're going to have a lot of avoidant type of behavior, where this could either be they don't want to talk about the, the event itself, they're avoiding the area that the event may have taken place in, uh, or they are avoiding any 
sort of memory or, or uh, reminder of the event. Other changes that you might be noticing, again, either in yourself or others, you could be having flashbacks, which is just in any given moment, all of a sudden feeling like the event is happening all over again, right in front of you. Or you could be having something called dissociative episodes. All a dissociation is, it's a fancy way of saying it's like an extreme daydream where you just check out for a certain amount of time and you actually lose spaces of time in the day. It's pretty common when I've worked with folks with PTSD in the past where they've described a dissociative episode as, Kelly, one minute I knew what I was doing and I was looking at the clock and the next minute, 10 minutes had gone by and I have no idea what just happened. That's a really good example of what a dissociation could actually feel like. Other folks might describe a dissociative episode as being fully aware of what's going on around them, but they might describe it as this is an out-of-body experience instead, almost where they feel like they can see and hear and feel everything that's going on around them, but they're floating above their body, looking down at everything and everybody else around them. Uh, then there's changes in sleep. A lot of folks will report sleep disturbances in the context of PTSD, where they're either having all of a sudden a lot of nightmares where maybe they were pretty good sleepers before, or somebody who may have had the occasional nightmare prior to a traumatic event, now all of a sudden is having night terrors. The important distinction between a nightmare and a night terror is that a nightmare is simply a bad dream. It's a pretty common experience that most people will have at some point or another, but a night terror is a bad dream like on steroids where it will wake you up out of your sleep. It's the kind of thing where if you or if you've ever heard somebody else describe, I sat straight up in bed, didn't know what was going on around me, and I was in a cold sweat and in a panic. That's a really good description of what a night terror could actually feel like. Um, a lot of folks will wake up from night terrors feeling like the, the dream is still ongoing. So, uh, and then the last thing to look out for is substance use. So there's a lot of folks with PTSD who will begin the process of self-medicating where either they're coming home from, from a shift and they just can't start to unwind until they've had that first beer or first glass of wine. Um, a lot of folks will become dependent on sleep aids because their sleep disturbances have become so significant that they're balanced, trying to balance that out with a sleep aid and becoming dependent on it instead. Um, but the most common thing, at least that I've seen, um, both being formerly in public safety and now working with public safety from the therapy side of things, is alcohol abuse or alcohol addiction. Uh, so guys, that's, that's the basics of this. The list of things to look out for as far as PTSD goes could become way more extensive than this and far, far more detailed. But these are the basics that everybody should be aware of. So again, if you or anybody else that you know, if you're seeing changes either in yourself or somebody that, that you care about, you know, my next video in here is going to be all about doing buddy checks. So look out for that video. And if you have any questions about this, have any concerns, comments, or need clarification on anything, please feel free to reach out to me. My website is www.turningpointwellnessllc.com. Again, my website is www.turningpointwellnessllc.com. And my email, which feel free to email me, is turningpointwellnessllc at gmail.com. You can also come over and follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook at Turning Point Wellness. And on YouTube, you can come follow me on my YouTube channel at The Salty Therapist. Guys, I hope you're having a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.